The freeze frame has earned its place as an iconic trope throughout the history of film and television. From the freeze frame outros common on so many sitcoms during the 80s, to those used for comedic effect or to add extreme emphasis to a moment, even one that I was very surprised to find in a Harry Potter film. Each one of those common uses serves one purpose. They're there to get your audience to focus on a moment. For today's video, I built a freeze frame from some concert footage to intentionally include all of the skills you would need to make any of the freeze frame effects shown in this montage. So if you guys are ready to keep going with this. Uh, hi, excuse me. Two seconds here. Um, I'm the one in the car, remember? This story's about me. Not him. We're going to be working inside of DaVinci Resolve today, and everything we're doing can be done in the free version. So if you don't have it yet, go download it. There's a link in the description. Whether you're working primarily on the cut page or the edit page, for this effect, you're going to want to open Fusion. Our finished node web is going to end up looking something like this, but don't let that worry you. We're going to go through each node one at a time, and it should be very easy to follow along. If you do run into any trouble though, please feel free to ask your questions in the comments and me or another Resolve user should be able to help you out. I like to do this on an adjustment clip, but you can work directly on the freeze frame itself if you'd rather do that. In order to do either of those, we're going to need to create our freeze frame. This is super easy to do in Resolve. There are a couple ways to do it, but the way we're using today has us finding the frame we want to freeze on, cutting it out with the blade tool, selecting it, then right clicking that sliver, and clicking change clip speed. Once that menu is open, go ahead and click the freeze frame box, then press OK. Now, if we stretch out our sliver, it'll be frozen frame for as long as we want it to be. In my case here, my duration is going to be controlled by how I can manipulate the song because I don't want the audio to stop when the video does. Once you're happy with how your frame fits into your timeline, if you're using an adjustment clip, go ahead and add that above your frame right now. This just adds an extra layer of mental comfort because I can always just delete this adjustment clip or make any changes I want to without messing with the original frame. Now that we either do or don't have our adjustment clip lined up, we'll open the Fusion page by either clicking on this little magic wand icon down here in our page selection bar, or if you're into that hotkey life, you can go ahead and press Shift 5. And if you want to double check that you're on the right clip, just go ahead and check on your timeline here, scroll through it. If nothing moves, then you have your freeze frame. If things do move, you need to pick a different one. So we'll go ahead and come up, open clips, and then find your freeze frame in here. We have a freeze frame, but we want to stylize it. What we're going to do first is cut him out. So we're going to grab a polygon mask. We're going to invert it so we can see what we're doing. Also, if you wanted to, you could just um, not have it connected and you can still draw that mask. I'm going to connect that up. Zoom in with control and scroll just like that. And then middle mouse to move around like this. So since it's a freeze frame, you can get as close as you want here and you don't need to worry about having it change because it's frozen. So I'm going to go all the way around him around his leg, around his guitar, everything. Oop, a little too far on those two. So I'm going to speed this up so you guys don't have to watch this. We've been doing a lot of rotoscoping on the channel lately, so I, I know it can get old. And we're just roughing this out. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's not going to be up there very long, but if you want to spend more time doing this, then you can just go ahead and spend as much time as you feel you need to get your effect looking how you want. So once you have your outline done, go ahead and close it by clicking on your first point again, and then I'll go away, we'll uninvert that, now that's all we have. So what we're gonna do is actually take our media in number one here and copy it. All right, so here we have this as the background. You can tell because it has the yellow line. We need to switch that. So we're gonna go ahead, click on our merge node, and then press Control T. Now the green line indicates that that's the foreground, and this is the background. So in order to see this a little bit better, we're gonna click on our media in number one and add a transform node there. You can find those right here, or anything you need, you can find with Shift Space and then just type in the name. 
So we're going to transform this masked one and we'll see that pop out just like that, which is pretty fun. So now we have this one, which we can affect without affecting the background, or we can make separate effects on the background, which we're going to do. So we'll grab a blur, add that in this line here, and then we'll just hold control and slide this up so it doesn't go too fast. Blur that out. If you remember in the example, I'll pop it up right now, this colored outline is going to be made with this polygon. So we're just going to grab our polygon, control C or command C to copy it. Double click out here so nothing's selected. Control or command V. And now we have that same polygon. We're going to add this to a background node. So now if we add this to our merge, you see that we have our background color. So the way I did this before was by clicking on our color picker here, dragging it onto his guitar and saying, yep, give us that color. So now we're going to need to add another merge. I'm going to pop that right in there. And we need this color to be between these two layers. So we're going to move this one to this merge now like that. And then we're going to put this one in this merge. So now this merge has a background of our original or well, a copy of our original and a foreground of our color, which feeds the background of this new merge with a foreground of our masked felly. We're actually going to feather that mask out a little bit. That's a little tough. So we'll click it. We'll go soft edge. We'll just bring that soft edge up just a skosh to soften that out. We'll do the same thing on this. Just like that. That's a little too much. Just, just like that. All right, cool. So now what we're going to do is add a transform node to this background. So we'll click on our background, click transform, or again, shift space, type transform. And then we're going to make this a little bit bigger as well just to give us that outline there. And we're going to change the aspect. We're going to make it a little lower, make it bigger, and we're going to move that center a little bit over. So it kind of gives like an outline effect. So let's go check out what we're going for over here. We're looking at this. See, we did not feather the mask on this one, but yeah, I should have. So we'll go back over here. We're going to go and make this background a little bit bigger with that transform. Just like that. And then we'll slide it over so it's a full outline. And we will bring that aspect down just a touch. That's looking all right right there. So we're going to go ahead now and add in our text. And this one actually is pretty cool. Um, this probably could have been its own short video, but when we use text, there's a lot of different ways that we can shape it in Resolve. So in the inspector for our text, I'm going to type the artist name, which in this case is Feli, and I'm going to switch that to, I don't know, we'll use this one, play ball. And then I'm going to size that up a touch like that. And then I'm going to pop into the shading tab go ahead and make this an outline just like that. And then we can change the thickness with this slider right here, which is going to come in handy when we try to make that double layer. But before we do that, we're going to go into our layout. We're going to find type right here. And instead of point, we're going to do path. And then we're going to add in a curve down here. And if you go too steep with the curve, it's going to get all crunched up. It still is a little bit. If you have that problem, go back to your main controls, go to tracking, and just turn that up a little bit to space those out. So now we're going to go ahead and copy paste this text, just like we've been doing. Control C, Control V. And with this one, we're actually going to change the color to that color we used before. So we will go ahead and grab the guitar again, or at this point we could grab our background here. Um, and can see that that fully covers it up. We would rather that be in the background for this. So we're going to control T on our merge to change the yellow line green and the green line yellow. And in order to get this to show up now, you remember a little bit earlier, we have our thickness control here. So we'll make that thicker. And as we do that, you can see it start to come out from behind the thing here. So we're actually going to check outside only. 
and we're going to do the same on this because we don't want to fill in those gaps. So go outside only and then thickness up just like that. Bring the thickness up on this one. Boom. And then we have that white outline of text with a, I don't even know what you would call that, a secondary outline of orange. So let's check our reference here. Close. Yep. And then we have that. And it's going to look a little bit different because this one is previously color graded and this one hasn't been. And if you want to see how I color graded that first one, make sure that you're subscribed because I'm going to show you how to do that on Saturday. Looks like all we need to add now is this logo. So we'll go into Fusion. And as you can see, we're getting a pretty gnarly looking node web here, but it was easy to make. It's just one piece at a time. The logo. In order to get that in there, we're going to open up our media pool and we're going to drag in our logo just like that. We need another merge node now, which we can get right here. Shift drag that right into this line. Make sure it's connected by moving it around or just trusting in the process. Then what we're going to do is drag this media in number two, which is the logo we just dragged in into the foreground of our merge five with this we're going to need another transform node can you believe it so we'll add that in there and then we will size that up just like that i'm going to move it a little higher and a little to the right size that up a little bit more um and if you want to just for flavor we'll do this and then we'll put it behind that orange so if we look at this, that means we need to add in another merge node in the beginning over here. And if you want, you can just move it over to the side so it's not a problem, but I like to be complete with these tutorials. So we'll add another merge, drop it in between right here. Behind this now, we're going to add that. So now our logo with our transform is the foreground for this merge, which is the background for this merge. So we have our cutout, our color right here, and then our cutout felly right here, and behind both of those is the logo. That might be a little bit confusing, but just go back, watch it again, um, and really just work on getting comfortable with backgrounds and foregrounds with your merge nodes. We can delete that right there. And now we have a slightly more efficient version of this original one that I made as a test. We're gonna tighten this up a little bit and then we're gonna add in keyframes to make this really work. So if we watch it right now, what we're gonna see is it's just gonna all pop up just like that. But what I want to have happen is what happens in this one where it freezes but there's motion in the freeze frame so it pops out like that the logo spins on there's motion blur we're gonna go in and add all those things right now we're gonna need to be changing our transforms for these keyframes so i'm gonna isolate our transforms over in the middle here and then give us a little bit of zoom and then the text we're also going to need to change in a similar way we'll do the blur as well so we'll bring the blur up here so everything that we're going to be working on is up here right now so we'll zoom in there we go this is what we're working with in order to do this we need to have all of this stuff keyframed at its original size rotation whatever at frame zero so we're going to go forward three frames because this is where we want it to complete. This is where we want it to end up where it is now. So we'll go into transform number one, which is for our cutout here. And we'll set a keyframe. We'll grab transform two, which is for the color. We'll set, it looks like two keyframes here, one for each of these. We'll grab blur, add a keyframe. Transform 3, which is for this guy here, our logo. And then we'll add a keyframe for that as well. And for the text, we're actually just going to add an overall transform for that. So we'll click on Merge, Transform, move these out of the way, and then Transform over here. Boom. Okay, so Transform right here. This is the text. You see, Angle, Change. Boom. And just like the other ones, Frame three is where we want it to go. So we'll go ahead and set a keyframe there and I want it to spin on. So I'm gonna set a keyframe for angle as well. 
I want this to spin on too. So we'll grab the transform for that and we'll set an angle keyframe. Now we can go back to zero, click on transform, click this little white dot underneath our parameter here and that snaps back to its original size. Do the same thing with the color outline with both of these. Kaboom. Okay, so our X is off. So we'll go back to three, set a center keyframe, back to zero, and then bring this back to 0.5. Boom, just like that. And you can see it a little bit. That's just because of the soft edge on the mask. That is not going to matter because everything's going to be moving immediately. So transform, we have our three keyframe set, just like right there. Very cool. At zero, we're going to go ahead and go negative 360. So we'll do a full spin and we're going to shrink it down all the way. If we check that out, one, two, three, spins out, there it is. We're going to do pretty much the exact same thing with our logo. We'll go back to frame zero. We will size it down to zero and we'll do a negative 360 again. So we'll go like this. We'll one, oop, one, two, three, and boom, there we go. We have that pop out. And then how many is this? We'll say 21. So we'll go three back from 21. And then we will add all of those same keyframes again so that we can have it pop back into the original frame and continue on with the video. So we'll do that. Oh, did we do blur? We did not. So zero blur size back. Kaboom. Just like that. All right. So 18. We have all of these done yes cool so then we'll go one two three forward and we'll bring them all back to their original baselines so this is going to go to zero and this is going to go back to negative 360 so it leaves the same way it came in transform here we're going to go right there then this our color is going to go back to its originals as well and then transform three boom just like that and negative 360 this is going to need to go all the way down blur back down to zero so now everything should be done so our zero our first frame and our final frame here are the same so that's good we'll go one two three everything pops on and then everything yep okay everything's cool and then one two three as it all pops off and the video continues so if we find our merge three here right before media out it might be a different number for you but whichever one goes into your media out you're going to go into your settings up here in your inspector and then turn on motion blur and then you turn that up you'll see that the higher the number is the smoother the motion blur gets so i'm just going to turn that to 10 and then I'm going to do the same thing for our other merges as well. This will make it much harder to run. So if you're going to do this, maybe do it as a last step before you go to render because it's going to make your playback really tough. So we have blur, blur, blur. Any merges over there? Nope. Blur. And then this one doesn't need it because it's covered by this one here. So we'll have our motion blur. So we'll one, two, three, everything pops on. And then at the end, just like we saw, bop, 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 boom. So let's check this out in the edit page and see if there's anything else we need to change. So again, our reference, let's see if we can see it pop back in on this one, right? One at a time, boom. And we'll check this out just like that. Easy enough. Yep. That looks good to me. If you want to loop this so that you can watch it over and over and over and really like perfect it and get it locked down, go ahead and watch this video right here and it will show you how to do that.